Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I just finished my first year at medical school here in Canada. As you can tell by the title of the video, today I'm gonna to be walking you through um, my study process as well as the development and explanation behind why I chose these strategies. But before we get started, I did wanna say a quick disclaimer that this is just what's worked for me and I'm not saying it's gonna work for everyone. Um, everybody has different learning styles, lifestyles, the way that they're taught. So I just wanted to share what I ended up coming up with in the hopes that people out there who are interested might take one or two of these strategies and give them a try and maybe implement them into their study routines. I also did want to note that this is a pre-clerkship year so the majority of content that we're taught is through lecture form and my goal with this strategy is not necessarily to get 100% or the highest marks in the class, but more so to gain a good comprehensive understanding and foundation that I can build more medical knowledge on top of. I really wanted to make sure that I understood the concepts and asked myself why so that later in the future when I'm using this knowledge in clinical practice or when I'm learning further details, it makes sense instead of just being purely memorization focused. So that being said, here's a brief summary of my overall strategy. I'll dive deeper into each of these individual sections and they'll be timestamped down below. For some background context, each time I go through the material, I count it as a pass. So my first pass would be watching the actual lectures and annotating the slides. My second pass would then be writing out notes with key points. My third pass is making Anki cards. And then my fourth and potentially additional passes are just doing those cards and working on practice problems with them. So my first pass consists of watching the actual lectures. What I personally like to do is watch the recordings on either 1.5 to two times speed. And as I'm watching them, I'll be annotating the slides on my iPad. I personally like to use GoodNotes. And what I do is write down any points that they might not have mentioned or highlight anything that they seem to emphasize or to me stands out as a key point. Even though I'm watching the recordings, I stay up to date with the lectures because every week we have a case that accompanies that weekly content and that allows us a chance to actually practice and implement the material. And if you haven't watched the lectures, you don't really know the knowledge to implement. So I would highly recommend staying up to date with watching the lectures um, according to the schedule that's been given to you. Pass number two is making summary notes. And this was something that I actually didn't start implementing until midway through my second semester. And the reason why I decided to do this is because Let's be honest, life gets in the way. Some weeks we're not as motivated or productive as other weeks. And I found that I wasn't able to keep up with making my Anki cards after every single week like I originally hoped for. In an ideal world, I would just skip the step and I didn't do it for every single week, but I did find myself for the majority of the weeks having to do this. So what I do during this pass is just scroll through the lecture slides that I previously annotated and then write down any key points on a Google Doc. And it's important to note that these notes aren't made for the intention of studying from later. It's just something that helps me force myself to actively think um, instead of just passively read when I go through the slides. And this way, by actively challenging myself to pull out the key points, I get a good refresher on the week as a whole and it puts me in a better place to start making my cards. So pass number three is making Anki cards. And if you've never heard of them before, Anki is essentially a software where you can make flashcards, but there's lots of different modifications that you can add. And it also makes use of something called space repetition. I feel like medical students talk about this all the time, but there's definitely a reason why we do. Space repetition is a method of reviewing material at systematic intervals. This means that when you see a flashcard, you're able to indicate if it was easy, hard, if you want to relearn it, etc. And based on how you rank that card, the software will determine when the next time you see it will be. So for example, if there's something that I totally didn't know, it'll show me the question again in maybe 10, 15 minutes, versus if something is super easy, it might be days, weeks, or even months before I see that card again. And because it's quizzing you on the content, it's also making use of something called active recall. It's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's just requiring requiring you to make an effort to think back and remember something that you learned previously. When I was an undergrad, I used the method of making notes and rereading those notes. And back then that worked perfectly fine for me because I was able to just basically memorize exactly what I wrote out. But once I started medical school, I realized that that was definitely not gonna work because we get taught so much content every day. If you try to memorize your notes, you'll end up with 300, 400 pages that you need to be remembering by the end of the semester. As for how I make my cards, this could be a whole other video in itself. Um, I'll link below some introductory videos of getting started with Anki, as well as some explanation of add-ons and types of cards there are available. But I'll briefly go through some things that I find to be really helpful. So starting off with the types of cards that I like to make, 
My cards are either close, image occlusion, or like a summary card. To break these down even further, closed cards are essentially fill in the blank cards. These are the most common types of cards that I like to use because I find it's the most effective and also the easiest way to go through a large amount of material. The second type of card is image occlusion. And what this is, is if you have an image with multiple labels, what you can do is you can hide all the labels and then reveal them one by one. And this is great for studying anatomy or anything that's in a big table format already. Finally, the third note type is like a big picture summary note. And this looks like a traditional flashcard. Honestly, it's my least favorite card to type to make and I try to avoid it when possible, but sometimes there's like nothing else really that works. And what I use these for is to cue memorization of processes. And the reason why I decided to start doing this was because I found that if I just only had closed cards that asked me specific details about the process, I felt like I was only focusing on small pieces and was missing out on the bigger picture. As for add-ons, I'll put a couple on the screen right here. These are additional tools built by third parties that you can add on to the software and it just improves the user experience and has some cool features. Pass number four is just studying the cards. This is pretty self-explanatory. I'll either do this on my phone on the app when I'm on the bus or on my laptop using this remote control, which I'll get. I just bought this last semester off of Amazon. It's like a Nintendo Switch, but you can program the keys to match your Anki shortcuts. Once again, I'll link a more detailed tutorial down below, but I would highly recommend this. I feel like whenever I'm studying, I'm like hunched over. And by using this, instead of pressing on the keyboard, definitely improves your posture and also makes it more fun. I think this was only $20 and the battery life is pretty decent. One important point that I'd like to highlight is if you decide to use Anki, you have to study these cards continuously. You can't just do them all a couple of days before the exam because you won't be making use of the space repetition phenomenon that I was talking about earlier. In order to get the most out of these cards, in theory, you should be doing them every day through the whole semester. When I see a card that I don't know, I'll stop and either review the lecture slides or refer to other resources in order to learn this concept. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my goal with studying is really to be able to understand and apply the knowledge in the future. And this step is really important to me because I want to make sure that I'm not just memorizing the details because I'll definitely forget it later but actually fully understanding different concepts because that helps with longer term retention as for how long each step takes i would say that watching a one hour lecture takes me around 30 to 45 minutes doing the second pass of writing summary notes takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes making the cards themselves can go between 10 to 45 minutes and then I don't really keep track of how long I study the cards for, but knowing the approximate time range for the first three steps helps better plan my study schedule. Now on to my holy grail of first year. This is my lecture tracker. I've talked about it in basically every study vlog, but today I'm gonna be fully breaking down each portion because I keep getting more and more questions about it. Um, I'm not gonna be sharing my exact template, but it's super easy for you to go create your own one, and I would highly recommend doing that um, because then you can customize it and personalize it to your own needs. So if you look on the leftmost side, you can see the lecture titles as well as the date that these lectures were on. Then I have a column for last pass, and this just means the last time I went over the material. The one, two, and three refer to my passes, and the color in the different boxes represent how difficult I thought the content was when I was going through it. Green means that it was fairly easy, I was able to fully understand it. Yellow means that I was sort of iffy, like I understood the majority of it, but I still need to do some more review before I feel fully comfortable with the material. And red means I didn't understand, I definitely need to go through it again. By ranking the passes with these different colors, it helps me see where I might need to spend a bit more of my time. I do have a column for hours studied, but I don't think this is really accurate, and honestly, I might remove it for next year. Then I have a checkbox column, just indicating whether or not I've already made my cards. And then the last column is just any additional notes to myself. I've also color coordinated the dates based on week. So you can see the different lines throughout the spreadsheet just separate out the different weeks. And that's because we have a new topic every week. So this just keeps additional organization for throughout the term. The reason why I decided to make this tracker was because we get so many lectures on a weekly basis. It's hard to keep track of where you're at. And I wanted to have a master document where I could just refer to for everything. So being able to see my progress in one place really helps me see and be more self-aware of where I'm at in my studying. And I found that this has really helped with A, feelings of being overwhelmed, and B, helping me better plan my study schedule in the sense that now I can make a better informed estimate on how long it will take for me to go through certain topics. 
I think that I've gone through all my steps. Um, but before I end off the video, I did want to give some overall general tips and advice. The first one would definitely be be kind to yourself, allow yourself to explore different techniques and know that not everything will work for everyone. The beginning of the year for me was definitely a bit of a trial and error period. Recognize that you should be flexible and might need to make some changes to your study routine in order to maximize efficiency. My second point is definitely don't get too caught up with the details. It can be really easy to get sucked up into the details, especially of pathophysiology, um, which is essentially why a disease process occurs. And yes, it's super important to know general pathophys, but you don't need to be memorizing the exact names and details of all the different enzymes that are working within that process. If you think about how much content you need to know overall, I personally don't think it's worth to be spending your time and energy memorizing those small minute details, which you're just gonna forget later because it's not important in clinical practice. The third would definitely be to bounce ideas off of friends. I got a lot of inspiration for my study strategies now from talking to friends, learning what they're doing, seeing what works for them, if they have any recommendations. It's a great way to explore different strategies and hear their perspectives when you're trying to find something that works for you. The fourth would be don't be afraid to use other resources. Lectures are not the be all end all. They're a great way to build a foundational base for your learning, but sometimes different YouTube videos or websites might even explain it better than your lecturers. So if you're finding that you're not understanding a concept the way that it's being explained to you like in school there's plenty of other resources out there that might explain it in a way that you better understand so don't be afraid to use those as well and finally i want to end off this video by saying that the decision to becoming a physician is not a race we are in this for the long run training itself takes between six to ten years or more and for me it's really important for everyone who's involved in this journey to be enjoying where they're at yes it's most definitely stressful and overwhelming at times but if you're able to find joy in the journey and actually look forward to studying or what you're doing it will make the whole process like a thousand times easier please take care of yourself do things outside of school studying and being a student doesn't need to be like your only personality trait you're allowed to have hobbies to socialize and to have balance and i think that's really the most important thing that brings us to the end of today's video i really do hope that this is useful because i know that i personally was lost on where to begin when i was first starting med school this process will most definitely evolve and change over the upcoming years but in the meantime if you have any questions feel free to send me a dm or comment it down below and i'll try to get back to you as soon as possible thank you so much for watching up to this point i really hope you enjoyed if you did make sure to give it a like and subscribe down below so i will see you all soon bye Thank you.